What is up, guys? Welcome back to Classic Console Repairs. Um, so today, uh, along with the many videos, so um, I'm trying to get uh, a backlog of videos ready um, because I'm going to be out of town for a little bit and it's not going to give me time to work on anything. Um, a little bit of a mini break and, and, and also getting married and um, you know all those wonderful things. Um, but I don't want to leave. I want to be able to post some videos and have them ready for you guys to check out uh, while I'm gone. So going through my list of uh, all of my stuff, um, what I've got today to look at is the new Nintendo Game & Watch. Now, you'll note a lot of other channels have already posted these. Um, their teardown and review and you know, those are all great. You know, I've seen some of them. Um, this is my personal one uh, out of my collection. Um, fear not, I have another one sitting on the shelf uh, that will never come out of its box and has never been opened and all of the things. Um, so the unique thing about this is the, about the box itself. So it comes with this clear plastic shell so it can hang neatly on a peg in the store, you know, and you can look at it. Um, which, which is cool. Um, however, this is supposed to be a retro reimagining or re-release of the old Game & Watches. And if you look at the actual box, the actual box says color screen, blah, 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 Game & Watch ball, right? Um, the back side of it shows, you know, you can use Super Mario, Super Mario Brothers Lost Levels, ball, and then it'll just do time as well. Um, I feel like time is just kind of thrown in because they could. Um, but like I said, this plastic sleeve displays the intro level to Super Mario Brothers 1 on the Super or on the regular NES, the original NES uh, that came out. It is the intro where you start. Uh, but what I find interesting about that is uh, when you start the game, the Goomba is actually further back, but, you know, glossing over all that. On the top of it, you've got, uh, you've got Lakitu, and then you've got, uh, the, the, the back side, you've got Bowser shooting the flames with the drawbridge and the axe, and, and that is extraordinarily very cool. You've got a bullet bill up here, um, nothing really on the bottom. Very cool little thing for Nintendo to print up and send out. Uh, you know, most of these are going to get thrown away. Um, but it's still very, very cool that they went through the trouble of printing this sleeve uh, just to go over. They could have just put a plain old plastic uh, plastic sleeve over it so it would hang on the shelf and all that, but they didn't. They actually went through the trouble uh, to make this look special, um, which is kind of Nintendo's thing, right? Um, Nintendo's Nintendo's shtick here lately uh, is the reimagining of their classic back back catalog. Uh, and especially with Mario's, what was it, 35th anniversary uh, of Mario that came out. Um, again, you know, this is just, all this is is Nintendo buying into their past. Uh, you know, they've got, they've got Princess Toadstool here, uh, and they've got Princess Peach over here. They've got the, the official Nintendo seal, you know, stuff that is not really a big thing anymore, but it used to be a huge deal. Uh, and, you know, of course now, you know, everyone knows because they rebrought the game and watch this guy back out, um, that this is kind of... Nintendo's foray into handheld gaming, and I say this is, the original Game & Watch was Nintendo's foray into handheld gaming, uh, and it was just a simple LCD screen. It looked identical to this uh, in, in, in nearly every way. Um, the difference being, of course, this one's got a color screen, and you know, a little bit, you know, you can do quite a bit more with it. It's not just an LCD screen with, uh, with, with you know, a couple of hands that move back and forth as, as, a, as a Mario. Uh, on the inside flap, you've got Mario and Luigi. Special thanks to you. 
which is super nice. Uh, you wouldn't see that unless you actually opened it up. When you slide, when you slide the console over, the first thing that you've got is the official Nintendo USB-C cord, which is how this thing charges. You keep sliding open, um, and inside, we'll set that down for now, we'll open him in a second, you get, and if we open this side up, and I'm doing this gently, I don't want to uh, damage the box in any way, um, all that is on this side is your uh, barcode, serial number, things like that. Nothing special on this side at all uh, or anywhere else. So, very cool little box that it comes in. The instruction manual is standard Nintendo, and this one's got smashed a little bit during packaging or whatever else. Um, and all this does is it simply folds out uh, in, in poster style. To just kind of tell you, you know, the the U Nintendo USB AC adapter sold separately. So you know, if you want that, you got to buy that. It's in multiple languages and all that. It just gives you it's the same front and back, just in different languages, um, to tell you how to use the thing and how, how it works and all of that stuff. Um, which is all again, very 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 cool. It's all in black and white. No color pictures on our instructions. Um, USB C cords very short. This is not meant to be played from, from, from very long, very far away. This is supposed to be a wireless. Uh, you, you, charge it, you charge it up and then you take it with you um, and uh, go play it. So opening this guy up, and of course we'll, we'll set him aside for just, just for now. This is nothing but just a, just a holder uh, just to keep him in place. And then we finally get to our Game & Watch. Um, now, I will tell you this, I, when I first got this in, I did open it up, uh, and just, just to take a look at it, and um, with no real intent to play it at all, the build quality, so the color on this is the Famicom colors, right? So, uh, the gold and the red and the texture, even on the back, I will tell you this, I've got a Famicom the texture is very reminiscent, very reminiscent of our Famicom, uh, of the texture on the Famicom. It's, it's a little bit finer, but it's very reminiscent of it. To hold in your hand, um, it's not as, it's, it's got some very sharp, hard edges, uh, but to play, uh, it's, got, it, it's got a good feel to it. And here's what I'll say. The D-pad is a little bit stiffer than I'd like. Um, the A and B buttons are not hard plastic buttons, they're rubberized, uh, along with all of the buttons up here. I'm not quite sure what this little slot right here is for at all. Um, it does got your USB-C charger on this side, your power button on this side, four simple screws, and well I say simple screws, they're tri-wings because it's Nintendo, uh, but four simple screws right here to turn the, or to, uh, to open the thing up, and that's it, that's it. There's nothing on the bottom, nothing on the top. Turning them on, See if he's even charged enough to turn on. Dead. Dead as a doornail. Let me grab, uh, let me reach right here and grab this USB C charger out of my soft box. And we'll plug him up. And as soon as we plug him up, oddly enough, it comes straight up with the time. Um, so I guess when I set this originally, there's a little block making a sound and coming across the bottom of the screen. I don't know what that's for, but when I set this originally, I guess it was uh, daylight savings time in the winter times when this came out, so it's held its time properly. I don't quite know what that block is moving all the way around, but that's interesting. Hmm. So let's hit time. Oh, and okay, so as we hit time, we can cycle through different background screens of things. Is that just a second counter? Let's see. It is. So that's just counting our seconds all the way around the board. I'm, I'm just counting right now. Yeah. 
should be one coming up here, and then there should be another one all the way center. That should be six or 30 seconds. Yep, that's it. Okay. And so again, as we hit the time button, all it does is cycle through the back through the uh, screens on it. Let me bring this up so you guys can see it. Okay, if we hit pause and select, it'll bring up the bright. We can change our screen brightness. We can change our time, and we can turn our sound up and down. All done digitally. So we'll hit our pause set button again, and then we'll hit game. When you hit game, you get Super Mario Brothers, Super Mario Brothers 2, and ball. Now, Super Mario Bros. 2 is not if you were in America, is not the Super Mario Brothers you were used to. Uh, if we hit A, this is actually Super Mario Brothers 2 that was released in uh, Europe, right, that is, or in Japan and everywhere else, that is what we know as Super Mario Brothers The Lost Levels, right? We got a very different version. Now, obviously, this is done... Uh, with emulation. Uh, this is done with emulation. So it's not exactly the same. So this is what the original Game & Watch would have looked like. And the idea was that you would catch the balls uh, as they came around. It's pretty difficult to do this. Uh, and keep the screen right where you want it. But that's the idea, and that it would speed up the more balls you got. Uh, and just make things a little bit tougher and tougher and tougher as it went. All right? So that's pretty much all there is to that. We'll turn him off for now. And I'm going to unplug him. Maybe. It's a pretty tight plug. Uh, but it is. It's, it's, I don't think, as a matter of fact, I know I've never actually plugged that up. Uh, sorry, I'm looking for my power jack in the back of my softbox light. I like to keep them charged uh, just in case. I'm going to set all this stuff right here. We're going to grab a very, very, very small... Um, this one of the smaller tri wings that we've got, and we're going to open this guy up and take a look inside. See if we can find. Uh, well, that's not a tri wing at all, is it? That's a Phillips. That's the wrong screwdriver bit. That was actually not a Phillips, that is a um, JIS screwdriver. Um, JI, JIS, for you guys that don't know, is the Japanese Industrial Standard Screwdriver. It is similar to a Phillips. It looks like a Phillips. Uh, looks similar-ish, but anybody that's, you know, had a screwdriver in their hand too much could, would know instantaneously um, that it is not the same. A JIS screwdriver will not work efficiently in a Phillips screw screwdriver head, whereas a Phillips screwdriver head will still work in a JIS, again, not as much. The idea with the JIS screwdriver uh, is that it would apply as much torque as the screw could take, and then the screwdriver would cam out uh, without damaging the screw, whereas the Phillips screwdriver bit is designed to not cam out, uh, which is why you end up bending and breaking screws and things like that. Uh, stripping the heads out of the screws is, is what we've always called it. Um, just an interesting tidbit there. Uh, so once you get the screws out, is there another screw I'm missing or is he just snug? There's no way there's a screw underneath there. There we go. So it's just got a couple of soft clips in it. Uh, all I did was stick my fingernail in and just start sliding it around the sides. Uh, and if I had to guess, I'd say it's probably the same 
it is, a couple of little soft clips. So you've got a soft clip here, here, and then the same places on the bottom on the obverse. Opening this guy up. Okay, so that's what that that's what that black part is. It is the speaker, the sound port coming out the side. Very interesting. And it is looking at it, it looks to be uh angled. Uh it looks like it looks like it's not assembled properly, but it's not. Uh it's actually held off this this uh plastic battery holder here, which here's your battery. Your your battery holder here is actually angled off the board so that it, so that they didn't have to put holes in here and the sound would come out the side. Very clever. I like that. Very clever. Um, you've got your simple power button on this side. This is a whole bracket. Uh, and it's got just a little pusher button up top. Um, from there, I don't really see anything, any other buttons on it. Now, of course, as is standard Nintendo, uh, we'll set this tri-wing screwdriver aside for now, uh, and we're going to then transition to a Phillips head, not a JIS screwdriver. Uh, and it is, again, sub-micro. This is, I believe, a Phillips triple alt. Yep. A Phillips triple zero. The USB-C connector, uh, I will say this, is fantastically secured. Uh, not only is it soldered in place in the board, uh, but it is also anchored by two screws. So that guy's not going anywhere at all. That is a that's a very 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 good design right there. I I like that a lot. That's a great design. So far, all of the screws inside have been identical in length, and I anticipate all of these will be identical in length uh, throughout the board because the board's so thin. I am just anticipating. I'm guessing. I don't know that yet to be true, but I'm guessing. Uh, I'll tell you what I am going to start doing. I'm going to start flipping up. I'm going to start... So that just flips up. Let me take a look. Does this lift? Okay, so that one... So this one lifts from the front up, and that allows you to pull this cable out. This one lifts from the back side, uh, the back end of, of the black, the, so you get your white connector and your little black tabs right there, and it lifts up from the back side, and that will allow you to wiggle that connector out. Um, the power just looks like it plugs up. Um, I said that. The connector is on this side, or at least the leads come down this side. Um, hmm, interesting. It doesn't lift that way. Does it prize out? No, it can't. Sorry, I'm just looking at how this uh, power connector comes off. It's got to just clip straight down. I think it does. I bet you if we get our screwdriver or our, or our I don't want to put too much pressure on it because I'm still not a hundred percent on that it does indeed come out this way. But it certainly looks like it. What I don't see is any kind of a little clip to lift, tilt, pry, push, anything like that. I don't see that on here. It is not soldered in uh, at all. That's what I thought. So it literally, and, and, and it's uncomfortable. I'll say that. It's, it was very uncomfortable. 
but it lifts straight up and pushes clips. The clips are on the inside of it, and they're tiny, just little, just little tiny plastic clip holders. Um, it's very uncomfortable to pull that guy out. I, I, I really didn't like that at all. Uh, I really, really, really did not like that. But that's the way it is. That's the way it's done. Now, I haven't watched any disassembly videos. I've watched a couple of reviews, which I was going to watch anyway. Uh, but I haven't watched any disassembly videos. Uh, and I haven't been online. Um, but what I, what I read, and I, I just browsing through my standard gaming news that pops up on my phone all the time, uh, what I read is, according to the guys that, that, that do the Hackchi mods, this cannot be modded. Cannot be. I don't know that that's true. I don't know that it's not true. Uh, that's just what I understand. I'll tell you what. Let me fire my soldering iron up because I'm going to want to take this board out without taking the speaker. And the speaker is soldered to the board. Um, that is the only, well, so far, the only soldered connection so far I see also, it does not appear as though the battery, I think it's stickied down. Yep. So the battery is sticky taped down, which is interesting because it's a hard case battery. No, it's not. No, it's not. So be careful with that because it's not a full hard case. Hmm. So there is a piece of sticky tape inside, but it looks like, I mean, at least on mine, it held the strongest right up here and right on this back edge, uh, but that was about it. This is not a full hard case. It's a Panasonic battery, um, HAC, HAC 006. Um, so, sorry, where were we? Uh, while, while we were gone, I did take and desolder the speaker uh, out of this. Um, it's they're straight down and it says black it's got a B and an R for black and red lists on both sides of the board uh, or on both sides of the connection so that, that's going to be awful hard to mess up from there uh, I tell you what, before I lift that up let's get back to the battery real quick um, so this is a lithium ion battery 525 milliamps 1.9 watt hour it's about right at 3.7 volts I think their math might be slightly off but we're not gonna we're not gonna be too picky. Um, there's not. Here's the interesting thing. Minus this screw, you could extend. There's no reason why you couldn't 3D print a new holder and extend this battery and get a slightly longer battery. Though I don't, I don't expect that the uh, that the battery will not last a good long time on this. Probably more than you're gonna more than you're gonna use it at any rate. Um, other than that, it's just a piece of sticky tape right here on the bottom. Um, nothing special about that at all. This is just a, this is a not a balanced uh, lithium ion battery. It's just a standard uh, positive and minus, uh, a hot negative on our battery. So we'll remove our board uh, and we'll take a good look. We got carbon pads instead of bare car carbon. That is good. So they've carbonized those, so they won't uh, so they won't oxidize, which I think is Nintendo thinking in the future a little bit because they if they it, probably if I had to guess they know that this is not going to be played a whole lot, um, and that if you know when you pick this up in a, a year or two, you know and it's been sitting on your shelf or wherever, um, they probably know that these are going to oxidize a little bit and then it won't play and people are going to be unhappy and. I, if I had to guess, I'd say that's what carbonizing these is about, coating them. Uh, looks like here on the board, our processor, I have no idea. It's ST, ST, no idea what that is. Um, got our charge circuit. We've got a couple of transistors, a couple of capacitors. This is all a pretty simple layout. I think probably if I had to guess our processor's got integrated memory built into it uh, we do you do have a water detection uh, indicator here 
Nothing on the back side of the board. Yeah, this has got to have memory built into it. I haven't Googled it, but it has to. There's no other NAND chips anywhere on the board that I see. Let me get the old micro, uh, magnifying glass. No. Not that I see in any of these. Uh, no, there's a, at least I'll say this: there's no NAND chips uh, that small that I'm aware of. I'm not saying they don't exist. I just am unaware of them if they do. Um, underneath, again, just rubberized buttons, and this is kind of what I was talking about earlier. Instead of doing drop-in buttons like they've always done, they just rubberize the entire thing. Um, well, that's fine. Um, the obverse of that being what they've done here with the D-pad. Uh, now, interestingly enough, this is very akin to the original NES. Of course, it was more of just a straight-up square, and this has kind of got these rounded drop-ins on it. No particular reason that I know of. Um, I mean, it's obviously only going to fit one way. Uh, but there is quite a bit of play in there, so it's not super tight. As a matter of fact, if you get that guy off center, you can see daylight through it, which, I mean, doesn't really matter all that much. Uh, it certainly won't affect or change anything, but normally what Nintendo does is, whereas this is a hard plastic drop-in button, they do the same on the A and B buttons and then cover it with, a, with, a, with one of these rubberized... Uh, button pushers and it's got the little carbon pads inside uh, so anyway that, that's that's pretty cool um, we've got one screw separate that hold that has to go in uh, to hold our plastic piece in. and I say that all the rest of the board screws well not all of them but this board screw this board screw this board screw all go all the way through the board and into through this plastic piece to screw into the the this housing that houses our speaker and this is kind of hold this up where you guys hopefully can see it a little bit uh, let me find a good spot a good spot in the white so if you can kind of look at that you see how it kind of looks like it's angled because it is on the back side so what they're doing is, because this sits flat, the speaker is angled, right, uh, so that it hits the face of this, uh, and they've actually, that's very interesting, they've actually really thought about this and put a little reflex chamber here uh, to direct the sound and it, with the proper form all the way out the front. That's actually very interesting. Um, other than that, this is just a standard piece of ABS. Uh, that they've had that they've had molded, blow molded, or whatever cast molded, um, and then we're on to the screen. Inolux is what it says. It's Inolux 17A. This is an ABS. Is what it is. What the plastic is. That's that's all it's really listing on it. Um, I want to be very careful. I'd like to push this screen out if I could. But it seems to be in there pretty firm. It is in there really firm. So I'm not going to be able to push that out. Uh, if I had to guess, uh, and I probably could if I felt like destroying it or risking destroying it. Of course, if yours is broken, it's, there's no big deal. But if I had to guess, they because there's enough of a lip right here, I can see how far in this goes. There's enough of a lip. I had to guess it's sticky taped around this edge. Um... If I had to guess, I'd say for almost for sure it is. I'm going to see. I'm just going to put a little pressure in this corner. Oh, oh, oh. No, yeah. See, what's happening here is the. this is a plastic housing. And when I started prying on that, the housing started coming up, but the screen did not. 
uh, which which is what I would kind of expect if they have sticky taped or glued the screen down. Um, so at any rate, there's our there's our there's our any our Game and Watch and okay, let me take a look at our charge port here. So you guys bear with my dogs. They're being loud and rambunctious. This is their playtime. Um so interestingly enough, on our on our charge port, on our USB C port, there are no data lines coming into our USB C. There is only uh a charge uh, uh a charge line, positive and negative coming in. That's it. That's all you get. So there is, this USB-C is only for charging. There is no way to pass data in and out of this, which means the only way to program our chip would be to do on a, like a, like a NAND reader where you set the whole chip down, you program, and then you just assemble the whole board around that with it pre-programmed. That's what that means to us. Uh, I don't, all, I also don't see any test points I mean, I, I see several, but I don't see like any JTAG connectors or anything like that, uh, except for here. There are five, one, two, three, four, five, five ports here. Um, one of those, tell you what, let me set some of this stuff aside real quick. Let's get our... Let's do a little spelunking with our, um, a little exploring, if you will, with our uh, microscope and our multimeter. We'll move these screws out of the way because they are bound to get uh, all shoved around. Uh, and we'll give you guys a better look of some of this stuff that I'm looking at under the microscope. Um, I mean, honestly, you know, listen, here's the thing. This thing is not, you know... It, you might be able to whatever emulator they're running. You might be able to pull off a you know a reflash of the game. You know you might be able to pull something like that off. But the reality is probably not. Um, the memory is going to be very limited on it. I, if I and this is again this speculation on my behalf. I don't really know for one hundred and ten percent. Okay. Am I all the way up? I am. So let's start over here on our USB-C port. So let me get my meter handy. Get him in continuity mode here. So on our USB-C port, you can kind of look around uh, and see. Let me get the other one. Uh, so obviously we've got a ground port here, and then we've got a loop that comes around to our capacitor. It's going to hit our charge. And this should be our ground right here. Should be. Let's. Uh, but I tell you what, the, the easiest way to find out is we'll go to a we'll go to a ground a known ground test point. It should be around that screw hole. I'll tell you what, we'll just go to the case itself. Is what we'll do. nothing. So there is nothing on that at all. Uh, I don't have, this is listed as CKP TI058A1SS. This is listed as 230. You guys can't see that. I'm sorry. Let me flip this guy. Let me flip the screen up so you guys can see what I'm seeing here. Uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. Uh, I'll even pan this guy around so he's semi straight for you. Sorry, I, d I did all of that up here at this uh, at this USB-C port. You guys couldn't even see it. Um, come up just a little bit, and then we can we can all then we can all see. Isn't that, won't that be nice? We come down just a little bit. Okay. So again, on our USB-C port, 
um, grounding ourselves to in a continuity mode to our USB C port. We can come down here, obviously we've got a we've got a ground here. Coming up from there, um, this leaves here, loops around to this capacitor and also leaves here and loops around. And then we've got another one with dual capacitors. Yeah, so we've got ground in the center of that guy. Yeah. Curious if this is uh curious if these two Yep. That's what I thought. Okay. So this right here is our CKP TI058 chip. Don't know what that is yet. This is our 230022A uh, chip. Don't know what that is yet. This chip is labeled simply KPH. I'm um, not sure what that is yet. This chip. L2202153. This is probably, I don't know what that is. I'm not, I'm not sure what any of these are. And this is our main chip, right? STM32H7B0 E3 uh, VBT67B559. Uh, VQ PHL seven B zero two six and then we've got a five five here a Z um, we've got an indicator and an indicator a triangle indicating which way it mounts and then over here we've got one more small chip we are going to have to really 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 zoom in to catch the writing on him three one five b zero one zero two four and as far as chips on our board that's it um, that's it all except for perhaps See if I can find them. Yeah, M30P, that's probably a sort of a preamp, if I had to guess. Yeah. Perhaps. And then we've got our little transistors over here. These are W1s, W1A04s. All three of them are the same. You've got one, you've got one here. I'm trying to do this, trying to move around my tweezers. You've got one here, you got one here. And these are backed by capacitors, which is interesting. Those are capacitors, not resistors. That's interesting. Same thing there. Uh, up top, nothing. You know, water indicator, zero ohm bridge resistor between them. Very interesting. So I'll tell you what. Let's look up. Let me hit the old Google real quick, and we'll let me let me key a few of these in. We got uh, CKP TI058. Yep. So that is our charge controller. So this guy right here, uh, where do where do you go? This guy right here is our charge controller, which is what I thought he was. He would almost have to be because he's so close uh, to our to our USB-C input. Um, from here, we've got uh, two, three, zero, zero, two, two, A. Returns nothing of any. To a you no, know, because that's going to be a Allen Bradley two three zero zero two two a. Let's see what that comes up. No, that does not come up with anything uh, offhand. That's not going to come up with anything. Let's check this guy right here. 
Let's check this guy right here. MX IC MX 25U 25U 8035F 0 Let's see what this comes up with. So that's a serial multi-in, multi-in, multi-out flash. Serial flash. Interesting. Let's take a look at this. I can get the whole PDF, uh, give or take. Sorry. So this is just a multi-in, multi-out serial flash. Uh, great to, for this is probably um, this is I, you know you know I I'm not quite sure what they're using this chip for. Uh, it's it's a multi-in, multi-out. So I mean it can take several different commands. This is probably uh, I mean, it's probably got, you're talking 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, it's about a total of 9, 10 buttons max. Um, this has got to be able to handle more than that. Um, moving on, let's take a look at this chip, see what we can come up with on him. STM 32H 7B 7B 0. So this is our okay, cool. Got it. Uh, so this is the their uh, ST micro uh, microelectronics. This is their value line. It's an ARM Cortex M7, double precision floating point, runs 280 megahertz. It does have, it does have, well, I was right, embedded flash memory, 128 kilobytes. Um, I'm just, it's got, uh, let me see here. 16 kilobytes of level one cache. Plus 16 bytes of D cache. Um, nothing else special about it. It also has a built in graphics controller. So this is kind of a one chip does it all kind of, uh, kind of thing. Uh, it also, okay. So this does have USB 2.0 high speed built into it. Uh, it's got a parallel input output slave, which is what is driving our other uh, multi and multi out MIMO, uh, MIMO chip. Um, okay. So yeah, so that's not a bad little chip at all, is it? Um, this is, I've got the whole thing right here. So this is B0, uh, STM3287, B0, RB. This is, we're looking for VB. So this is a 100 pin LQFP is what we're looking at. This guy right here, let me, let me flip him over and see if there's any difference. But this should should only be a hundred pin, twenty-five each side. Yep. 
same. Oh, let me let me let me step back for just one second. Okay, so it's got 128 kilobytes of flash memory of of, of storage, right? 128 kilobytes flash memory, 1,376 kilobytes of RAM. Okay, uh, the same 280 megahertz CPU. This is this actual chip. Um, it does have a graphic accelerator on it. Uh, it will handle external memory interface if you want. It'll SMPS, large sets of peripherals. Um, you can buy this chip. You can, you can get these all day long. These are easy chips. Uh, it does have extensive range inputs, outputs, 32-bit, bus matrix, uh, it's got two pulse width uh, modulation timers for motor control, which you would never use. Three low power timers. It's got an RNG built into it. Um, I'm just kind of flipping through. Uh, 1.4 meg megabytes of RAM built into it. 128 kilobytes of flash memory plus one kilobyte of uh, OTP. 1.4 megabits of RAM. 100 92 kilobytes, kilobits, kilobytes, kilobytes, uh, TCM RAM. Anything else? No. I mean, it's a, that's a pretty good little chip. It doesn't have any memory, but it will run a memory controller. So theoretically, I mean, if you could, it's also got graphics built into it to drive a TFT, which is how we're driving our display. Um... So, I mean, theoretically, it does have a debug mode as well. So, it's got a SWT and JTAG interfaces, which is exactly what I thought this right here was. I'd be willing to bet you that this is our JTAG right here, even though we only see a connection on the one side. I'd be willing to bet you, and this is only a dual layer board, I think. I don't see any other connection. But I'd be willing to bet you you could JTAG into this chip easy uh, and swap it out. And I say easy. I think you'd probably you'd probably end up soldering to the pins, and which couldn't which couldn't be that hard to uh, to sort out which ones you would need to solder to to access it. Now, what software they're using to read and write to this? Uh, it's not going to be proprietary to Nintendo, is it? Anyway, um, glossing over all of that. So, so this is not a very complicated board at all. Um, this is not a very complicated piece of piece of hardware. Uh, as a matter of fact, it's incredibly, incredibly, incredibly simple uh, and very basic, uh, which is what Nintendo's aim was. You know, to make something quick and easy. Uh, they probably didn't see, and nor do I. Uh, a lot of people going after to hack these and. I'm going to be honest with you, as far as a, from a hacking point of view, there's not a lot of room left in this, okay? There's really, really, really not. You know, they, you know, you might be able to switch out, you know, uh, the ROM. You might be able to, um, you know, in addition to switching out the ROM, you might be able to do some other things, you, you know, if you were good enough, and I'm certainly not. Let's get that straight right, right off the bat. Uh, if you were good enough, you could theoretically, uh, notice my use of theoretically there, you could theoretically add additional memory to it. Um, theoretically, you could do that. Uh, the board is definitely capable of handling that. And when I say the board, the, uh, the controller itself, the, the processor, is definitely capable of handling a little bit more external memory. So that is something that you could do, um, but here's the question. Here, here's this is what's going to beg the question: Why? This was built uh, to a price point. Okay, this entire little gizmo, and as cool as it is, and it, and let's let's make no mistake, it is very, very, very cool. Uh, but it was built down to a price. Okay. Uh, it was built to be 
as 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 cheap as Nintendo could get away with making one. Okay, this was not built to be a Switch or anything else. This was built to be as cheap as Nintendo could build it to be, um, and get by with it. They probably spent as much money, as much money, if not more, uh, designing the exterior look and feel of this little unit. And I'm talking about the buttons and the color schemes and, you know, they probably spent more time and money in the boxing uh, of this, the packaging, um, than they did in the whole rest of the unit. Not that, again, not that this is a bad little device. It's a fantastic little device. I think it's great. Um, I'm, I'm flabbergasted by it. I think it's just one of the coolest little things, which is why I bought one and why I then bought another one. Uh, you know, uh, you know, it's it's a very cool little thing, um, and it's got you know it's got there's there's a little room in there in it. Uh, you know, you you might get by with punch out, but I don't think that it has the power to uh, to run like a Mario three. I I certainly don't think it has the room. Um, to run like a Mario Brothers 3. If I remember, Super Mario Brothers 3 was almost like 3 megabytes total size, so this obviously is not going to get there. Um, this is obviously not going to touch it as far as that goes. Uh, however, you know, could you theoretically get into it? Sure. Sure you could. Uh, how hard would it be? How good are you at micro soldering? Because that's what this is. That's what getting into this chip is going to come down to. Um, I I don't think it would. It, it's going to be a situation where you would end up removing the board or removing the chip and having to you know re re flow it back onto the board. I don't think it's that complicated at all. Um, I, I don't I don't believe that's the case, but I do think that you would have to solder uh, quite a bit, quite a bit uh, uh, of jumper wires to this to get it to function the way that you you wanted to, and to play the the games and the things. I don't know why I turn my solder and iron off when I'm fixing to need it. Um, and that's what I think. You know, is it, it would it be worth it? You know, uh, maybe, maybe. I don't. I don't necessarily see the value in it because, again, this being built down to the price that it was for a reason. Um, I don't see the value in. In. You know. There's no there's you would in order to play more than more than the games that they've got on this, uh, you're literally talking about having to go in, reprogram the chip, adding adding some more flash memory to it. You know, could you probably program it to read an SD card and put a SD card reader over here? Yeah, I mean I think you could. Um, I think you know according to the manufacturer of the chip, you know it'll it'll. It's got some room in it, but I don't. I don't think that it. I don't think that there's much room left. I think it's got just exactly what it needs, uh, and just a little bit of overhead. Um, you know, remember, not only is this thing keeping track of time, which is no big deal, uh, but it, and not only is it also running. Sorry. Not only is it also running, you know, Mario Brothers 1 and Mario Brothers The Lost Levels or Mario Brothers 2 everywhere else in the world. Not only is it doing that, um, but additionally, additionally, it's also running, there's an emulator built into this. There's got to be. Um, so they're running an emulator on this guy as well. So when I say there's not a lot of room left, I, I don't see 
I don't see a lot of overhead left in the system, uh, in the processor, in the memory available to run a bunch more. I'm not saying it's not possible, uh, and I could be wrong. Again, you know, I haven't. I have. I've literally researched as much as you guys have. Oh, I turned it on, and now it's beeping at me. I turned it on, and now it's beeping at me. We must turn it back off. You must be quiet. Okay, now we are quiet. Perfect. It started beeping at me. Um, sorry, uh, it was beeping at me. Um, like I said, it's a very cool little device, and it's very cool to have. Uh, and if you don't have one, you should get one before they stop making them all together. If they haven't already, um, I don't know. I know I, I know I picked my my other one up on Amazon just the other day and had it shipped. I don't I don't know how long they're gonna make them. I don't. I haven't really delved into it that much. I've been kind of uh, handling some other things going on a lot lately, uh, and trying to trying to launch a YouTube channel and you know take over the world with Pinky and the Brain and the rest of it. Um, so I haven't really followed followed along as well as I probably as well as I normally would have with these. Um, I knew when it I knew when it came out. I, I knew I had to have one. Uh, I actually pre-ordered it like a month ahead of time on Amazon so I could get it on launch day. <laughs> not that not that I was ever going to play it. I think I played it for maybe 10 minutes and put it back down. What was the point of pre-ordering it? Because I could. Uh, you know. What's the point of pre-ordering anything? Because, because, because... You know, you 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 wanna you wanna you wanna you wanna get it before you wanna get it before anybody else does. You wanna show the world that you got it first. You know, uh, you know that's why I got up and stood in line. You know, at midnight uh, for an Xbox Series S. You know, that's why that's why I got back up on launch day and you know, drove back up to the store with the same poor fools. You know, it was so funny. I picked my Xbox Series S up. I was there on launch day, or, or the first day you could pre-order the thing, and uh, I got there. I didn't get there at midnight. I got there, I don't know, at, I, I think it was 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning, and I sat outside in my tiny little bitty towns, um, my tiny little towns, one and only game store, GameStop, and uh, you know, I sat out there for the longest time. I took a chair. It was cold. It was miserable, and I had to pee the whole time, and it was miserable and whatever else, but I was the only person in line, uh, <laughs> the first person in line, and then another guy showed up, and another guy, and, you know, several hours later, when the store opened up at, like, 11, or whatever time it was, pre-order time, they came out, you know, an hour before, and they gave out tickets, and I was the first person to get a ticket in my hand, because I was the first person standing in line, and everybody obeyed the code, you know, uh, and so, uh, you know, I was the first person to pay for it, and I would never forget, you know, the guy going, uh, okay, well, it's $55 today, and I went, no, it's not. That's not the, that's not the price. You know, he goes, oh, did you want to pay for the whole thing? Well, yeah, you know, of course I did. What a stupid question is that? But, you know, I get it. Maybe, the, you know, not everybody had the money, but I wasn't risking it. I was going to be you know, paying for the thing, the whole, the whole thing, give it all to me. Anyway, um you know, and and, and you know, it, it had a certain value to me to do that. Um, you know, and this did too. This did too. This has a certain value to me uh, to to have gotten it so early and to have it uh, and to play with it. Um, you know, as a as a collectible, and that's I think you know that's what this is. You know, all of us being honest with each other a little bit here. This is a collectible. You know, this is not, uh, and and I don't think it was ever meant. I mean, yes, it's obviously they've got to deliver something you can play because it's called a Game and Watch. Um, but Nintendo, I, I I have to say, I have to believe. You know, they never, they knew they could make a fortune, right, on selling these guys at the price they sold them at because of the nostalgia factor. You know, this is. This is not a player. This is a um, this is a trinket. 
that says you put it on your shelf with the rest of your collection, you know, and and that's it, you know, and and you've got one, then you've got you know you've got a Game and Watch, the re-release, you know, when they re-released them in 2020, you know, 2020, and you've got one, you know, and uh, you know in in 20 in 2070, you know how cool look not only you know if you're if you're cool like I am. You know, you will not only get this, but you'll have the the original one too to set beside it, and you have both of them. And then in 2070, you know, your your you know your great grandkids, you know, will be around and go, oh, you know, look at this, you know, great great granddad had one of these, you know, and look there it is, you know, and they'll open it up and the battery won't work and they won't have a USB C charger and it'll be completely useless to anyone, uh, but you'll have it. And uh, won't that be a wonderful thing for you? Uh, I probably won't be around to see it, but then, you know, at some point, uh, when I shuffle shuffle off this mortal earth, you know, somebody's going to have to figure out exactly how they divide up all of my video games, and, you know, maybe somebody will look at this and get, you know, when I'm old and, you know, they put me in the ground and they're going through all my stuff, you know, and, you know, uh, hopefully it'll, you know, many years from now, and they'll go, oh, you know, look at that, you know. Granddad, you know, had a had an original NES. I, you know, how do we even play this thing? You know, how do we even hook this up? And I think that's the nostalgia that I remember as a child. Let's not forget, guys. That is what Nintendo is cashing in on with this. That is what this is. You know, this was not a silly money grab on Nintendo's part. This was not. You know, but it was. This was playing on the heartstrings of it's you know Mario's 35th anniversary, and it's you know it's it's Super Mario, but it's the Game and Watch, and this is the first time we saw Mario. And look at how cool and amazing this is. And you can get one that plays the original Game and Watch games because you know those are impossible to find. <laughs> you can get them on eBay all day long. Um, but we'll gloss over that. Uh, we'll gloss over that completely. Um, you know, they don't want to talk about that. But because look, there's a new one, and and it's got you know two different Mario's, and it's got a watch. You know, because it has to have a watch because it's a game and a watch. Uh, you know, and that's what Nintendo's doing. You know, is it is it very neat? It really is. Uh, and I appreciate that Nintendo. Even though I understand the capitalism behind it, I, I very much appreciate that they remember us. You know, when I say us, the 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 you know the '80s kids, and they remember that, and they keep these things coming out for those of us who grew up with this, uh, because you know it, it's a stupid little handheld toy that you're not going to play with. Um, but man, it's cool to me, and I hope it's cool to you too. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, like, subscribe, do the thing, you know, all the stuff, uh, the clicks and the buttons and the bells and all the things. Uh, if you liked it, do that. Come hang out with me more. I'm going to, um, like I said, there's going to be a bunch of these videos that are going to be releasing. Um, I don't know which order they're going to come out in, but, uh, stick around. We're going to pull some more stuff off the shelf and take a look at it over time. Uh, at any rate, this is the Nintendo Game & Watch the, uh, for the Super Mario Brothers 35th anniversary. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit of something. And if you don't have one of these, go get one. Put it on your shelf. You're not going to play with it, but it sure does look cool on your shelf. See you guys next time.